Hello everyone, this is Leo from the PC Security Channel, and this is the private evaluation of Malwarebytes CDR. In the last video, we looked at a realistic situation where we launched Wasted Locker, the infamous ransomware that hit Garmin, and we tried to effectively lock down the system to prevent it spreading laterally to other machines on our network. In this video, we're going to look at ransomware rollback, one of the main features that in theory is supposed to be able to reverse the effects of ransomware and restore your files within a certain time period. Now before we look at the actual incident, I just want to remind you that in order to enable ransomware rollback, you need to go into policies, either create a new policy or change the default one by going under settings and selecting ransomware rollback over here. Now of course you will also have to turn on suspicious activity monitoring in order to do this. And once you do, you can actually set it up exactly as you like, depending on your system specification. So we've got three options here. One is the rollback timeframe. If you've got the disk space, the flexibility allows you to go as far as 72 hours, which means even if you discover a ransomware attack fairly late, you still might be able to roll back. There's also an option for the disk space quota, and there's also a maximum file size for the rollback between 1 and 100 megabytes. So there's quite a bit of flexibility in this feature. That's really nice. So now let's look at our suspicious activity. So we've got wastedlocker.exe. This is our main ransomware that executed, but of course, it seems to have done its mischief through another process which was also reported later. So we're going to go through the chain of events over here. And as you can see, there's a lot of things being launched. We've got command prompt, VSS admin, but as you can see, most of these were launched by another process, which is glob.bin. So we're going to go back and locate that in our suspicious activity reporting. And if we expand on this, as you can see, this is the actual process that performed the ransomware activity and also deleted our shadow copies. Now we're going to test the ransomware rollback feature. We've done this with several other threats, but this is the first time I'm trying it with wasted lockers. So we'll see what happens live. Once again, the process is very simple. Under action, you click on remediate. This brings up a pop-up which asks, do you want to execute the remediation? And a reboot is going to be required to do it. We're going to say yes. And now the task is created just like any other task, like a scan or a quarantine. Now, one of the main takeaways here is again, the simplicity of the interface and the one click nature of every single function. I love the fact that the product is that simplistic and doesn't overload the user with a lot of information while at the same time, not everyone is going to like the fact that there's no real like progress bar when all of these actions are happening to give you an update or more step-by-step -step update on the process itself. But the way this works is that we are totally done right now. The remediation is going to be performed, the ransomware activity is going to be rolled back, and we're going to have our files restored. All of this is going to take place without any further action required, and our system should be back up and running in some time. Now, a lot of these functions do take time, so even the suspicious activity reporting takes um, a few minutes to start showing up in the web console. Same thing when you start a remediation, it goes to pending remediation, and then eventually when everything is done, it's going to tell you. So until then, you just have to wait and be patient. Our system is now restarting as part of the remediation process, and we've also removed the isolation. So you can do that easily by going into actions and saying remove isolation. The endpoint screen is also where you get suspicious activity and malware detections showing up. So these are actual threats that were detected, and these are the suspicious activities and you've got a small little number to show how many there are. Now our system is back up and running so let's see what is the status of our files. So if we go into documents, woohoo, as you can see everything is back to normal. If we open our document you can see that if you can read this your data is safe. So we were able to successfully restore our documents. Let's see if the same is the case with our pictures and it is indeed the case. So that pretty much worked like a charm. We've also tested this with other threats like Black Claw and contemporary ransomware samples and in every case we were able to fully restore our files. So ransomware rollback is definitely one of the killer features that this product has. Make sure you turn it on if you're using this product because let's be honest, suspicious activity monitoring and ransomware rollback are some of the main features here. So I'd highly recommend turning them on. Functionally, the way it works from a user perspective is again very good because all you have to do is click a couple of buttons and it takes care of all the other complexity like restoring your files, removing the ransomware 
somewhere. All of that happens in one click. The downsides, the lack of progress updates. Just keep in mind there is a significant delay every time a suspicious behavior is picked up. So it's not exactly like a rule-based reporting system where you're just getting pinged every time a rule is violated. It's more like there is some analysis that goes on and you're only notified if the activity is significant enough. The positives of this approach is again, it keeps it simple for the user. The downside is it may not work that well against other types of threats where they're trying to completely wipe the system, overwrite the boot record, for example. But again, suspicious activity monitoring is just part of the many layers of defense and it seems to excel at detecting and rolling back ransomware. So I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. If you'd like to get in touch with us, feel free to do so at thepcsecuritychannel.com or tpsc.tech.